Hey there YouTube, we are fresh out of the gym and about ready to go to work, but I really need to talk to you today because I'm just a little bit pissed off. Before I go on full rant mode, I need to pour myself a cup of coffee because it's gonna be my breakfast today. See, I'm trying the new thing, or it's not new, it's been around for a long time, but the bulletproof coffee trend, where you like take butter and oil and make your coffee what seems to be super unhealthy, but it's supposed to be good, and then you don't have to eat breakfast because it keeps you full all day, I don't know. Whatever, I'm gonna try it, so let's go do that. Okay, and yes, if you were watching that last shot, there's a coffee mug that has coffee in it. I am drinking coffee when I'm making more coffee because I have a problem and I should probably talk to somebody about it. Okay, so here it goes. First taste of bulletproof coffee ever and uh, I don't know, cue coffee slow-mo. I can almost guarantee there won't be any coffee slow-mos in the next video, sorry for all of them. Go. I guess the important question is, uh, how do I like it? And I'll say it's not bad. It doesn't taste that much different than any other non-flavored milk-based creamer and coffee, right? I do think it's a little bit thinner than I expected. Like, I expect it to be very thick. Also, to be fair, I used less, I don't know, oils and butter than what most people do. I used half of a tablespoon of coconut oil, just finished off that thing that I had left, and half of a tablespoon of butter. A lot of people do one full tablespoon and one full tablespoon, so that might make it a little bit thicker. It does get frothy, which is cool, so it has more of like a latte consistency as opposed to just kind of plopping it in coffee and stirring it a bunch and hoping that the oil doesn't settle up top. I do take a whole host of vitamins in the morning and the pills range from really small to really big and this isn't great to take pills with. I tried, I usually use my regular coffee. It tastes fine, like it tastes like unsweetened coffee with some dairy-based creamer in it and more of a latte consistency. I don't know, I'll do it again. If it keeps me full, I just don't see how this could be a breakfast replacement. Maybe I need to get more buttery and more oily. But other than that, I like, I don't know how, I don't know how it's gonna keep me full. Anyways, I'm trying to get to work a little bit early today, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up my bulletproof mess and finish this and put some more clothes on and then head out. So I'm taking you guys with me today. I can't film at the office really. It's a bit of a sticky situation because of the line of work that we're in, but we do have this really awesome trail right behind the office that I may try to find a quiet spot, post up, and chat a little bit during my lunch break. So I definitely spent the last 10 minutes packing a lunch and snacks for the day, and then walked all the way down the stairs without actually grabbing them. So, you know, we're off to a great start Tuesday. Made it to the car with lunch in tow, and it seems like I'm not gonna have much luck lighting my face in the car right now. Actually, let's move and see if this helps. Hey, that's better. Okay, so what am I wanting to talk about today? Well, there's this big picture idea that I want to talk about. Um, it was spurred by a comment that I got on a old video, but it's a recent comment. And I almost made a video right then and there kind of addressing it, but I wanted to take a little bit of a breath and address it in a more direct way. And I'll do that in a video next week. I, I want to get some kind of like facts and figures and numbers and examples and address it in that way. But today I want to talk about the big picture item that it's really all about, and that's doubt. And doubt is a cancer, and 
doubt can come in many forms. It can be internal. I doubt myself all the time. There's this thing called imposter syndrome that I think everyone suffers from from time to time as a developer. And then there can be external doubt as well, where people think you're not good enough or you feel that people think you're not good enough. Just people telling you that ideas are stupid or ideas don't make sense or that you'll never be able to do X or Y. Doubt. It sucks. So let's talk about it today. Okay guys, so full disclosure, it's now after work and I'm in a Starbucks parking lot because I have a meeting um, with Jason, who you met if you're a longtime follower. We are, or have been, or still are, working on a project together. Finding time to talk during lunch was impossible because I took my lunch at my desk while I was working and today has been a bit of a mess all over the place and I got thrown onto a couple things that I didn't realize I was gonna get thrown onto and then some things were proposed and yeah, not a mess in a bad way, a mess in a like really, really good and exciting way, but it's just been very, very busy. So yeah, I'm having some doubts about whether I can pull this video off or not and doubt is the theme. So at least I can give you a full disclosure uh, doubt in my mind right now. Also, there's gum in my mouth. I've been trying to hide it, but now you can see it. I'm sorry. <sighs> So let me tell you an embarrassing story. See, you were just watching that video and it was all filmed on Tuesday and I filmed the rest of the video. I sat in the Starbucks parking lot after I finished that meeting with Jason and talked to you guys for a while about doubt. And see, there's one problem. How do I describe it? It's really embarrassing. I filmed that whole thing and didn't realize uh, that there was something happening in the video that I don't wanna throw up on YouTube. Um, Huh, how do I say this? Well, I had something in my nose for like five minutes of film time. So yeah, that video is not going up, but let me explain what I was saying. So we're talking about doubt, right? And basically what I'm trying to say in this video is that doubt can come from a lot of places and it's internal or external, societal, all of those kind of things can plant seeds in your mind about who you are, what you are, and what you can be. I don't come from a typical background as somebody who becomes a developer. I didn't go to school for this, like in like university or anything like that. I went to school for uh, creative writing. And you know, I didn't come from the most techie of backgrounds. My parents weren't super into computer I wasn't hacking away on machines when I was 13. None of that stuff is true about me, yet here I am and I'm a developer. And I think we can get bogged down in our own minds about what is and what isn't a developer. But if you take a look around the YouTube community, the developers that are here on YouTube, we have a pretty diverse cast of characters. And so I think that there is somebody that you could probably identify with and attach onto uh, for their content. And that's not just on YouTube. There are plenty of people on Instagram and Twitter who are posting to developer related content who don't look like me and who don't maybe look like the picture in your mind of what you think a developer is. It's really good to have that representation and to be able to see somebody like you doing the things that you wanna do because one of the biggest doubts that people can have about getting into this industry are, am I the right fit? Am I the right type of person? I get comments all the time about, am I too old? Am I in the wrong spot? I didn't do this in school. I don't know this, I don't know that. I'm not good at this. Can I become a developer? And the answer is, it's up to you. If you wanna put the work in to get to that point where you can be a developer, that's great. See, a lot of things that we consider barriers to entry of this developer scene are actually just hills that you have to climb and adversity that you have to get through to be able to maintain and reach your overall goal. Not everyone's journey is going to be the same. Some people are going to have it easier. Some people are going to have it harder. But if you put in the work to get there, I promise you, you can. You don't have to be a genius to be a coder. You don't have to have 150 IQ. You don't have to know really theoretical and really advanced math to do this. If you wanna be a front-end engineer or a back-end engineer, you can do this. Just because you don't have the skills that they're hiring for at Facebook Facebook or Google or YouTube doesn't mean that you can't be a developer. If you can't get to that level of skill, if you can't get to that level of genius, it doesn't mean that you can't be a developer. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of open coding jobs right now all across the country for people that can sit down at a machine and produce results. And if you can do that, you can succeed in this career. You should always strive to be the best, but you should always strive to be the best version of yourself. And you can't get bogged down by comparing yourself to other people when it comes to what their skill level 
level is or what their inherent ability or inherent advantages are when it comes to this sort of thing. And those doubts are mostly created within ourselves and they're things that our brains cook up because when we get put against a wall or when we kind of think that something is hard, a lot of times we wanna come up with excuses to not do it. The easiest path by all means is always the path that you're already on. But if you wanna change careers, if you wanna change your life, if you wanna get into development because it's a better gig than what you have right now, then you're going to have to sacrifice some things. And that may be time, that may be social life, it may be a whole bunch of things. It could be money. There's a bunch of things that you may have to sacrifice in the near term to come out on the other end way better. But just because there are doubts there because you're not sure if you have the money to do this or you're not sure if you have the skills to do this, there's no reason not to try. You're never gonna know until you try. If you get in there and you don't like it, then by all means, go ahead and do that and figure out you don't like it and find something else. But there's no downside to trying and failing and pushing through that adversity. We all fail. We all have doubts. I worried uh, when I was at the boot camp about whether this was made for me. I worried at my first job if I was going to be good at this. And I worry at my second job if I'm going to continue to be successful in this career. Those doubts are inherent. There's this thing called imposter syndrome. I have it. A lot of people have it. It comes in waves. And you have to tell yourself that you're here for a reason. You're doing this for a reason. You can be good enough. You just need to put in the work. There are also a lot of outside sources of doubt. I put up a video not too long ago where I talked about how I wanted to start a YouTube channel a long time ago and I never did because somebody told me that it was a silly idea, so I just kind of pushed it off. And I didn't even actually start one until a year and a half ago. And that's sad. And these external sources of doubt that plant these seeds in your mind can be your friends, your family, YouTube comments, people on Twitter, people on Instagram giving unrealistic expectations of what development is or who you are or any of those things. What you have to do is put a wall around your mind when it comes to those sorts of things. Constructive criticism is good and you should welcome that. But people telling you that you can't or it's impossible, those people need to be pushed to the side, at least their opinions. And maybe if they're not that important to you, consider severing those ties because every little piece that gets thrown your way in that negative space is just going to attach itself to you and make you question yourself. And what you don't want to do is question yourself. Doubt is the biggest killer of motivation. And the number one thing that you need to succeed in this industry is motivation. You have to be willing to do it. So if there's any way that you can avoid the doubt that kills motivation, by all means, do it. Another great way that I've found to stay motivated and decrease doubt is to celebrate small wins. You don't have to go build Facebook to feel successful as a developer. Building that first to-do app or building that first thing in vanilla JavaScript or getting that first connection between two different files, anything, anything at all, just being able to maintain a grid on CSS or getting CSS positioning down halfway, those are all small successes that you should celebrate over and over and over again every time you have one. Don't beat yourself up because it took you seven hours to do something that it took you know, an hour and a half for somebody else to do. Celebrate that you got it done because it took you longer so you had to put in more effort, more energy, and the next time you do it, you'll be able to do it a lot quicker. Doubt sucks and we are all going to run into it. It's human nature. Over, over riddled confidence isn't a thing that most people have and if you do have it, that can be a hindrance to success too. So just make sure that you take those doubts, you listen to them, you pick out the constructive parts of them, but you push through and you stay motivated to just get better. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. I am filming this on Wednesday, the 28th of February in 2018. If you guys want to, I'm gonna be running a Twitch stream later on tonight, probably around 5.30, 6 o'clock. So if you wanna come hang out, it's twitch.tv backslash Aaron and Beta. Come hang out, ask any developer questions that you want to, anything like that. That's there and we're hanging out. It's a sweet community, not very big yet, but we're trying to grow it. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. If you wanna leave a comment below, feel free to do that. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button to follow me along in my journey. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon. Bye.